Hello again. This week I'm going to look at the natural world which supplies quite a lot of information for crosswords. There's a lot of things that crop up a lot as answers and I'll talk about how to sort of spot that that's where a clue is going and there's a lot of stuff that comes up in wordplay not as commonly as coming up as answers but there are some really crucial bits that it really helps you to know. So first of all things that come up as answers plants are fairly common and um, I'm always terrified when I see a plant clue because my plant knowledge is pretty poor. Um, so for instance I once plugged away a clue for ages and realised that the answer looked a lot like it was going to be Ingrid Bergman and I had no idea why and then you google it and someone named a rose after Ingrid Bergman, bred a hybrid rose and named it after Ingrid Bergman. So you'll see plant as a definition and then if you're lucky you know your plants, you build a bit of the clue and you can guess from the letters you've got. If you're unlucky you might be completely lost like I am. But you'll also see some slightly sort of less direct definition. So you'll see plant, shrub, bush, tree, and you'll know you're looking for a type of tree, but you might see trailer or climber. Bloomer is a particularly common one. Um, something like that, succulent, something like that. And then you think, okay, you might just not instantly go to plants first, but then after a while you'll realize that's what you're looking for. You'll also see this word. And you might be looking for a type of flower because that's exactly what that looks like. But it can also be pronounced flower, and I have once seen it used to indicate that the answer was the name of a river, a thing that flows. So yeah, that's the kind of little trick you're, you've got to be watching out for, because you go for the obvious definition, find out you're wrong. Um, the other one that's very similar to this is uh, with animals, you will see cat or dog, and you know you're looking for a type of cat or dog, or mammal, and you're looking for a mammal, and it's nice and simple definition. But you also see some slightly more obscure things like flyer for a type of bird or singer and it turns out to be nightingale, jumper, kangaroo, that sort of thing where it's more of a thing that the animal commonly does. And I'll show you an example of this now actually. So, so this is actually going to be an animal that substitutes in a clue. And there are a few more common than others but generally you just have to sort of keep your mind open. It's the same way the definition works. It will in be indicated by the same words, you'll still have plant or swimmer, as in this case, or flyer or something, but you'll be looking for a much shorter name that you can then fit into the rest of the clue. So if it's in a definition, you know, you'll, have, you'll know how many letters you're looking for, whether you can look for a really long name of a plant, you know, forget me not, you see hyphens in there, or you'll know if you're looking for a short word that you can fit in. Because if you look at this clue, and we won't worry too much about the function of it, but taken in by looks an awful lot like a piece of functionality. So you're thinking swimmer, and you now know that swimmer could possibly be a type of fish. And it's taken in by a word for tricks, and it means comforts over here. So quite commonly for fish, you'll have dab, chub, uh, there's a dace, but this is sole. So the fish is the sole. It's taken in by, meaning it's within the word for tricks, Cons, you con someone. Consoles, comforts. So swimmer, soul, taken in by tricks. Cons, comforts, consoles. And that's just one of the ways you'll see an animal used in, um, in substitution. And there are a few other common ones, animal and vegetable as it were. This, the number of words that end L-I-N-G, ling, you might know this already, is um, a type of heather or possibly a Scottish word for heather. But yes, heather or grass can often indicate ling. That's, uh, that's reasonably common. Oh, that's a U. Ounce is a type of wildcat. I can't remember where they come from, but obviously very, that's, I've seen that as an answer a lot, but obviously you think of pounce, flounce, stuff like that. And obviously it's also a weight. So there's a lot of fun for the setter to have there. Setters actually, the dogs come up quite a lot for obvious reasons. But the really important one, very important to remember, Ants, and to a lesser extent bees, but ants in particular. You think of the number of words that have A-N-T or A-N-T-S in them. And so obviously you need a common way to clue it, it's going to come up quite a lot. So ants obviously are a hive mind and they are social workers. So you'll see, it's really tenuous I know, but you'll see social worker a lot and you'll go off down a road of wondering about carer or sort of you know community something service and it just means ant. 
Social worker, uh, worker on its own. Drone. Queen, sometimes. Soldier. So you have soldier ants, you have queen ants, you have drone bees. I think you have drone ants as well, can't be sure. You definitely have worker ants. So worker, social worker can all indicate ant. And that comes up an awful lot. So if you take one thing away from this one, it's that worker, social worker, ants. They can also lead you way off down the wrong way and it's something to do with um, peasants in the Russian Revolution. So watch out for that one. But yeah, so animals often indicated by slightly tenuous verbs based on what they do. Plants, usually fairly obvious. You'll see a word, plant, tree, shrub, something like that. You know, you're looking for one. But in substitution, ants and bees, keep an eye out for them because they crop up quite a lot. And this tricky little heather ling over here, they're, um, they're all very common and can give you a nice little shortcut to getting half an answer and then building the rest from there. So yeah, keep an eye out for the bees and the ants and happy solving.